Hello, my name is Sarah. I am an English teacher and language anxiety coach. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about dealing with unknown and unfamiliar vocabulary while you are reading. I'm going to talk about exam reading and I'm going to talk about reading for pleasure. And I'm going to share two tips on how you can deal with unfamiliar language as you read. Now, I have met students who say things like, I want to learn every word in English. Um, and I don't mean to make you feel bad, but that's not going to happen. Not for you and not for me. So I'm a well-educated native speaker and I still find new words when I read articles. Quite, quite often, actually. Now, if I'm a 47 year old educated native English speaker and I still find new vocabulary, my guess is that for you, there will always be new language. And because you can't really make that problem of new language go away, it's not going to go away, you have to develop strategies to deal with the problem. Okay? because there's nothing you can do about the new words. They will always be there. So what kind of things can you do to help yourself with new language? The absolute worst thing that you can do is to read things with a smartphone. And every time you find a new word, you go straight to your phone and you look it up. This is the worst thing you can possibly do. When you are reading, it is really important that you read and that you kind of separate out reading and vocabulary. They're, they're different skills, obviously they are connected, but you can't be working on vocabulary and reading at the same time, okay? So you need to make that distinction. Now I'm going to read my article. I've read it. Now I'm going to look up that strange vocabulary. So the first thing you need to do is to separate out reading and vocabulary. Now, when it comes to learning vocabulary, a really useful tip would be to um, learn word families. I've even had students at C1, C2 who say, I don't know this word. And I say, yes, you do know this word. Look, look at the root and then look at the end bit, which is the suffix. And then the student says, oh, it's that word. I say, yes, it's that word. So a good example recently is a student of mine who knows the word solution, but didn't recognize the word solve. So obviously those words are connected, but this student hadn't made that connection in their mind. So when you learn vocabulary, it can massively help you to learn a whole family, to solve a solution, to be solvable, to be unsolvable. That's a family. And if you learn all of those at the same time, it means that you will always recognize the different suffixes and will be able to match them to the root meaning. Now, this is all very well, but what do you do when you're reading something and you come across a word and you really don't know what it is? You have to work it out from the context, right? And this is particularly true in exam reading where you don't have access to a dictionary, right? There's no, there's no Google Translate in IELTS, not going to happen. So with those new bits of vocabulary, uh, the new words you find in exam reading, you need to practice working things out from the context. Now, students often find this quite challenging, so I'm gonna give you an example. And the word that we're gonna talk about is the word talk, but this is spelled T-A-U-K. T-A-U-K, talk. What does it mean? Don't look it up, just think, talk. Talk. Don't know that word. I thought talk was T-A-L-K. Ah, strange. All right, I'm going to give you 
a bit of context. She lifted the talk. She lifted the talk. Well, we don't know very specifically what a talk is, but we do know that we can lift it. And it's small enough that it can be lifted by a person. What happens with a little bit more context? She lifted the talk and had a drink. She lifted the talk and had a drink. So now we know that a talk is small enough to lift, but also that we drink from it. So it could be a cup or a bottle or a flask or a glass or something like that, that we hold in our hands and drink from. Now again, we're not being uber specific, we don't know exactly what it is, but we do have an idea of what talk means. And that's how you work words out from context. You need to find the, the new word, you look at the words before it, and you look at the words after it, and you, you use the words around the new word to help you figure out the meaning. So that's a really good strategy in exams. You need to practice it so that you can do it quite quickly and with confidence. Um, also in exam reading, it's really important to know that you don't need 100% understanding, okay? You don't need to understand everything. You don't, honestly, you don't. Students sometimes panic, oh my God, I don't know this word, this is a disaster. Not necessarily, okay? The worst thing you can do in exam reading is stop and think too long about a word. You should have a timetable in your head for your reading exam so that you know how long you're going to spend on each question and you stick to that. No matter how difficult the words are, don't deviate from your plan, okay? Um, and that's really it for exam reading. You have to do, if you're preparing for IELTS or Cambridge, you are going to have to do a lot of vocabulary preparation before the exam. <clears throat> vocabulary preparation should be a huge part of preparing for IELTS and the Cambridge exams. You, you cannot learn too many words, but when it comes to the day itself, you can't get stuck with the new ones, okay? You have to keep going, use context, to help you, um, that's what you need to do for an exam. Now, when you're reading for pleasure, it's a little bit different because obviously you don't have time restraints and you can, you know, do whatever you want. Even here, you should not be reading with Google Translate in your hand, ever. Extensive reading, you wanna read your passage or your text from the beginning to the end, one time. And it might be easy, it might be difficult, you might understand, you might not understand, <clears throat> but you need to have a think. Okay, I've read my passage, I understood this bit, that's a bit, a bit strange over here. That's how you can start to decide which vocabulary to look for. Look for words that repeat more than once first. Look for words that are particularly difficult. If there's a paragraph and you think, oh my God, that paragraph's really hard, that's a good paragraph to start looking at because it might contain a lot of new language. Words that repeat, words in particularly difficult passages, and then just keep reading it from A to B once you've learned the repeated words. Oh, is it easier? Yeah, it is, apart from this bit here. And then you look at the vocabulary for the difficult bit and read it again. Is it easier? Well, yeah, no, it's a lot easier. Again, you don't need to try to learn all the new words. That will be too many. Just look for the important words and let the rest go. They'll wait for another time. Now, if you have any comments or any questions, please do ask. I'm always happy to... Um, answer the questions. If you disagree with me, uh, please argue with me. I love a good debate about things like this. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube and you would like to subscribe, please do. I put new videos onto my channel several times a week. 
and if there's a topic that you'd like me to make a video about please ask I'm always up for having suggestions from you um, and I'd love to help you with your English learning thank you so much for watching and um, I'll see you next time have a lovely day